I don't. I just cut in at like a random time. Oh, you like this? Personalized. Yeah. Uh-oh, oh, big yeah. time. I know. Where'd you get that? Uh, I think I got it on like Etsy or something. This was thirty dollars. And it's stickers. They I put stickers. Oh, I thought the whole thing was like a That's custom mic Oh, box. no, no. This is just... I feel like anything on it. You're just like... You're asking someone to make one thing. So I it's like, You can't <laughs> yeah. be like... They're like firing up a whole printing press. You can't be like... I would like to pay 30 cents for it, please. Yeah, it's just like an old woman, retired woman. Mm-hmm. Always is. Who's like... You know, this is their passion, though. That's what's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. This is what they care about most. But... uh yeah, dude, I thought it would add a little bit more professionalism and authenticity to the whole nice. thing. Yeah, it, it does. Nice. It looks pretty sexy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when I do the jokes, it's like it's like I'm the real deal. All you of put a the, sudden. Oh, I was gonna ask if you put the cat back on. Oh and yeah, this is. this is ready to ready to rip over here. Wait, nice. what, am I gonna fall through? What is this? Oh, there's like this is like a window here. So, oh, so I can't lean. You could if you put like a pillow behind you. Okay. This is a very Persian setup. I find. I know, yeah. dude. What I'm I want to like get. You, I feel bad. You're like in a dog cage. No, I feel fine. You're good. I'm cozy. Yeah, yeah you can right. also. I'll go wherever. You want me to stretch out? Yeah, you can stretch out. Dude. You seem. How do you feel about a foot touch? That doesn't seem like your vibe. Oh no, I'm, dude. I I'm not like a physical touch guy. <laughs> really? Shocking. Never been, dude. <laughs> and I think it's because like my mom would never hug us. Mm-hmm. Like we would like go in for a hug and she'd be like reading and like we'd like hug her and she'd just kind of go like this. That's so funny <laughs> to picture a mom just going like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, she's like, she's reading right. smut. Yeah, she's reading romance novel. It's like, yeah. how do you not want to feel? Maybe that's why though. That would also be weird if like she was in the middle of reading about like a guy like exploding from his cock and she's yeah. just like, yeah, Patty, come in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just think that you do a podcast from a bed. Which is yeah. physical. Same with me. I yes. do a podcast from bed. But, but do you also have the same like kind of hold up? Yeah, yeah. We don't touch at all. But like in real life, do you like touch? I don't touch it. Like when people like hug me, like at a mic or a party, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. I'm it, like, you're fucking weird, dude. I, yeah, yeah. I don't like when people who I've met like three or four times like go in for a hug. Yeah, I'm yes. Like, yeah. Like because I'm just like. I, yeah, I remember, like, one of the first times I met Zach Bravia, and, like, he'll be fine with me mentioning this, because, like, I've taught, like, one time he, like, went in for a hug, and I was just, like, <laughs> I was, like, so resistant to it, and he was just, like, oh, like, I'm from the Midwest, I'm kind of a hugger. I'm, like, oh, dude, you're yeah. kind of gay. <laughs> but, no, but, you like. just reflexively punch him in the face. Yeah, dude, but I am, like, getting bet because, like, comedian, I, like, love comedians. I love them. They're, like. Because they just make sense, you know? It's mm-hmm. like, the the longer you do comedy, the more other people don't really... It's hard to connect as much, truly, you know? Yeah. So, like, now when I see comedians, I get, like, very excited. And, like, now I'm, like, a hug guy. But, like... I like I'm I was never like I never wanted anyone to like even touch me bump into me if it ever ha- I'm like jumping and stuff but like with a relationship like I'm all about like intimacy and stuff so like a touch in like a relationship is like way more, Means more. yeah and yeah. we're cut from the same strain I feel the same yeah, way yeah but it's like it's you don't want that from like everyone. Because then it's like I think it loses its value. Now we're kind of back to the to the Persian thing because yeah. you find physical touch outside of an intimate relationship to be yeah, haram. Yeah. It's unholy. I also right. just like the eyes of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I could wear a burqa, I would. Yeah. Like, I like to be close. I don't like to be seen. You know, yeah. the only attention I want is like on stage. You want people to be like listening to what you're saying. Yeah. I'm like, don't look at me. Don't you know? I, I'd wear a burqa if I could. Yeah. Oh, just a white woman wearing a burqa, just being like, it's not religious, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy Pelosi. Just how I roll. Yeah, yeah there was, uh, I was watching Nancy Shark Tank Pelosi. one time, and there was this guy who pitched this idea, and it was like, it was like if you have to pee, but there's no bathroom, so it's for like, if you're at like a concert or something where you don't want to leave your spot, it's like this like big poncho suit that like you zip up, and it's just like your head, and the rest is just like down and there's like a little slot that you stick your dick in and pee oh and then you take it off and like put it in your backpack and it's just full of piss but did any of the sharks buy into that no yeah i'm out because <laughs> no. there's so- every now and then on shark tank they'll have someone on who it's like it's a joke to the audience and no one's gonna give money for it yeah but do they know that or are they like going through the whole pre-production process like i'm gonna be a fucking millionaire yeah no they <laughs> definitely don't know that because the only way you come up with an idea like that is if you're so self-obsessed yeah. and like right. you're like oh i'm a genius <laughs> for being able to piss in the street <laughs> that makes me another level of a person i, I saw one i don't know if it was a shark tank but they invented something so that women could like pee on road trips 
It's just okay. like a funnel. Yeah, yeah. So you can like... <laughs> a well, you know pattern. women, and then they're spraying all over the place. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're like dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then I was thinking to myself, I'm like, how many women are going on like solo road trips? Yeah. Not, not You're many. You're asking for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's or who's, true. Or who's the chick that died in the van? Uh, oh. Uh, what's her name? Um, is it like Gabby something? Gabby Petito? Oh, yeah. Gabby the one who disappeared? Petito. Yeah. Is that the one you're thinking of? Is that the one where her boyfriend killed her in the van on like the five day trip? Brian Laundry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. White people. <laughs> it's funny how this is sad. I can remember their names. Can't remember any of the black people that were shot. <laughs> well, Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, there's a thing. It's missing white lady syndrome. Because it's like whenever like, a white lady goes missing, it's just like, God. we have to find. It's like she's dead in the woods. White, I don't understand. White women. What 24 hour coverage for? They're so <laughs> special, white women. <laughs> so special. To picture anything bad happening to them. <laughs> I know. It makes me so <laughs> mad at the world. <laughs> Yeah. I, oh, yes. Yeah, oh, I was going to say, based on the Persian thing, I did think it would be a fun idea to get a hookah in here. That would be tight. And like ripping a hookah. But I think like the bed, it would like fall over and that set also, on fire. That would be funny. <laughs> It'd be like such a funny idea. But then just when you like walked from here after smoking hookah for an hour yeah. out of your apartment and it just fucking just billowed out the of the hallway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And my room would smell disgusting. Horrible. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's nothing that like you can smoke and it just smells totally good after. I guess like vape. You oh, yeah, vape I guess. smell good. Yeah, sure. yeah this I think one they smells smell pretty good? good. Yeah, what does that one smell? Watermelon like? Watermelon ice. Yeah, it probably smells good. Who do you want to do? You want to taste? Ready? <laughs> no, I don't want to taste. <laughs> Shotgunning. That's so annoying. <laughs> That is such an aggressive act. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that was crazy because I knew it was coming. I had nowhere to go. Yeah. There was so, nowhere to uh, duck out. Speaking of smoking things, mm -hmm. this weekend I went on a uh, – I went to see this band Fish mm -hmm. with uh, one of my comedy friends who is a girl. I'm sure you know who it is, but I don't want to say her name because I don't want to know what she wants. It's <laughs> – <laughs> Hasn't she been on the, like, on the podcast? Yeah, like she's on the time? podcast all the time. You guys so I, also talk about this. Next yeah, time. yeah. So like, I went with her and her family to Denver <laughs> to like see because they see fish. I went with her last year, and like, it's just two nights. They see fish. They get like an Airbnb. We all do mushrooms together, which is like crazy. Oh yeah, her to family's do. like very into mushrooms. Just yes, probably. very into like being open and like talking to each other just yeah. a complete like departure from what my upbringing was is she was, like hi they're like hippies or something or like yeah, new, new they're, muslim or? they're like new age <laughs> kind of <laughs> did you say weaker muslim no, I, I said new muslim uh, okay yeah i i guess they're like pretty at, like very well read affluent like they're like therapists right yeah they're they're all about psychology and stuff and yeah. they they there's nothing that they don't talk about so it's like very open and whatever but the first night we did like i did like a gram and a half of mushrooms had an awesome time but then after we went back to the airbnb and one of her cousins bought dmt holy shit yeah and they were all like taking hits of it and i'm like looking at we're like we can't believe they're doing this for like this is the most insane drug of all time arguably and it's like they're it's just like being passed around and stuff so eventually like i was watching them do it and like they would like take a couple hits and then just kind of like relax and be like oh that was like super trippy and like nice and whatever so i was like okay i'm never gonna get another chance to do this you know so i ended up taking a hit just one hit and i fucking blasted did you, off did you break through i broke through Damn. so do you know like at all anything about dmt no. basically it's the chemical that's released in your brain when you die oh to my. like help you cope with the process of death you and heard of ayahuasca yeah so it's like the base form of ayahuasca so it's like the same active chemical in ayahuasca when you take it with ayahuasca it's like it takes like eight hours because right. it works through your digestive system. When you smoke it, it's like five minutes, the whole experience. Yeah. So you're smoking it. We were smoking it. And okay. it's literally like the second your lips leave the bowl. With the really? Side. Dude, like the second I took my lips off of it, like all of this like sand and stuff was like coming off of everyone in the room. And I just like burst out laughing because it was so intense. Yeah. It was like the strongest psychedelic thing I've ever felt. And then it gets like so much more intense to the point where I just like closed my eyes and I was like, all right, I need to like relax. And I'm just like going through this vortex and I'm like, 
oh my God, I'm overdosing. I was like, I thought I was like, oh, I was like, I did way too much. Yeah. Like, this is so embarrassing. I'm so in you front still of like her. a sense of self at this time? <laughs> yes. I'm like, you're acutely aware of like everything that's going on. And like every time they would talk, it would like stress me out because it would like come in and like move around me yeah. and like reverberate. And it, like, I was just like, I wanted like silence, but I'm like freaking out and I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to die. Like I felt like I was overdosing and I was going to die and it got so scary. So I just told myself like people who do DMT, like it does feel like you're going to die. And I mm -hmm. like said that to myself and then the DMT was like, no, you're going to fucking die. <laughs> you're going to no, die. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to die <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So finally I was just like, I guess this is it. I guess I'm dead and I like accepted it. And I just broke through to like this beautiful like cascade of like visuals that I can't even remember. Like yeah. it's all as soon as it was over, I forgot everything I saw. But like the feeling I felt after was like this intense love from the universe for uh, like specifically like almost like they understood who I was more than I did, mm -hmm. you know? Like, cause a lot of times if you, if you're like in love, like what that is, is like, they're in love with whatever they perceive you as, you mm -hmm. know? But like, this was like, oh no, this is like genuinely me. And it was like beautiful. I also felt that being gay is wrong. <laughs> no, no. That two things were utterly true. Universal love, it exists among all people and we're all entitled to it. And two, the one exception to that is gay yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess, it's like I guess the visualization of the word fag with a cross through it. Yeah, yeah. The machine yeah. elves are very hateful. Yeah, yeah, out. exactly. But yeah, I didn't see like any entities or anything like that, but so are you oh my sitting God. during all this? Are you walking around? Are you I, chatting? I was just sitting and I just leaned my head back on the couch and closed my eyes and like like tears were rolling down my face. It was so beautiful, like and so profound. Everyone's tripping. Everyone was tripping, but nobody had the experience I had. And I think it was because they hit it. They would hit it like once, then again, then again. They hit like three small hits. You gotta go. Yeah. And I just took one big hit and like didn't exhale. And it was like, boom, gone. Blast off. And like the like this is this was on saturday and this is now like thursday mm -hmm. i still feel so incredible like i was depressed leading going into that weekend and i don't feel any of that anymore it's like totally gone like you totally. look better really swear to god well from the last time i've seen you which oh, okay. i knew you were going through some stuff i think you yeah. look worse <laughs> <laughs> that's also yeah that's also okay but yeah just like like every little thing, like I was like, cause I would, I was worried. I was like, I'm not posting enough clips. All these like people yeah. are on the, the reels and Instagram and stuff. I'm not doing it, blah, blah, blah. And all that stuff was like, Oh, none of that matters right. at all. Like at all. And like, that was such a relief, you know? So like, I don't know. Now I just feel like I'm not depressed. I'm not like anxious. It's just kind of like present, like being very present. Do you want to do it again? Or is no. it a one and done? Situation? It's a one and done. It was so horrifying. <laughs> Yeah. Like it was so much. It's almost like trauma, you know? It's like dying. Mm -hmm. And then like afterward I'm like I can't put myself through that again, but I also don't feel the need to. Like I I still feel the effects of it, I guess. So Yeah. But yeah, so I'm not even like advocating. I, actually as soon as I was done, I looked at I was like don't do it because I was like that was so much. I I didn't know if she was like able to handle it because mm -hmm. I didn't know either. But uh so she didn't end up doing it. But then like a couple days later, I was like, you should probably do it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, dude, crazy. So that's uh, that was what I did this week. Yeah. <laughs> Based, was it out of a vape? It was out of like a bowl, just like a regular bowl. And just like heated up the bottom? No, we put like weed in the bottom gotcha. and then put the DMT on top. Oh. Gotcha. So you're basically smoking it off. Imagine it was just the weed. The <laughs> 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 I tried to smoke it in uh, in high school. Really? But it was because um, uh, me and my buddy, this was when like Silk Road was big. Yeah, yeah. And my friend, dude, I, I always think about this because me and my buddy would like, we would order a bunch of psychedelics from Silk Road. Which was awesome, but also like we spent what is probably now like fifty million dollars in Bitcoin. Oh on, <laughs> yeah, 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 on just like two CB and like, yeah, like yeah. weird shit like that. Uh, but we, he got DMT. He ended up doing it a bunch. Um, but he uh, we had it in like the base of a bubbler, and we were like trying to heat it up like through the glass. Yeah, but it like didn't. So I like I like took a hit, and I was like pulled, pulled but then it went away. 
Oh, wow. And I've never encountered it since then. Yeah. That's the thing is it's not – it's weird because you think like someone who's going to give you this drug is like a godlike person or whatever. But it's really just like a scraggly looking guy at a fish concert. The, <laughs> the first time I encountered DMT, me and my friends were going to the – this is how, like, how I found out about it. We were going to the park to smoke weed in Atlanta and there were just two guys – like in their car, like also smoking something. And we're like, oh, are you guys smoking weed as well? And they're like, no, we're smoking DMT <laughs> in this parking lot. And then you're like going back to work or something. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's like, uh, how do you, I couldn't do anything. Like, there was no way I was like able to just go back and do a job or like, because so, you're, you're just sitting with this, like, basically a glimpse into a reality that's always been here, but we just can't see it. You know, mm -hmm. and it felt like a portal. It didn't feel like a drug. It felt like something totally different. Yeah. And like, I, I, I don't know. I've been so annoying about this. Like, that's why I wanted to talk about it on the pod. Cause I'm like, once it's out here, I'm done talking about it. Cause like, I don't want to drive everyone crazy because nobody can have the same experience, you know, unless like it just happened to them as well. Or if, unless they've like broken, but a lot of people I've talked to haven't had that like breakthrough, you know? And but it tastes like a sneaker. Did you feel that? Did it like? I remember it tasted horrible. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It tastes like rubber almost. But like, I guess it's real. You know, I guess it's like my college roommate also had like he just had like ayahuasca. But my, he would like distill all these crazy things. I remember in college he, we always had San Pedro cactus around. Yeah, so we would like trip on that a lot, which was like all it's like peyote. That's so awesome and, tripping on a cactus. And then he would also did he grew mushrooms <laughs> in his closet, and then he also just like I don't even know if he ever did anything with it, but he just had like the bark of like an ayahuasca. Tree. Yeah, he yeah. like doing the synthesis for stuff like that. Yeah, wow, that's quite an interesting friend you have. Yeah, yeah, he's a Google guy, Skyler. <laughs> yeah, he's probably Skyler. Like he's a, a Google guy. No, a cool guy. Oh, cool guy. I was gonna yeah. say, all right. Yeah. Should I get his name out of there? If I remember to text you after, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, dude, it was because he, he would uh, he would make it in our apartment. The the peyote, he would like chop it up. Dude, this was I, 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 I this was what I'm describing happened our junior year of college, where he would chop it up because we lived together. He would chop up the cactus and like extract the shit from it in like water. He would boil it mm -hmm. and then he would pour the water in a in like a baking sheet and like evaporate the water off of it. And then so he'd get like the sticky gel. Okay. Could just like putting the capsules in take. Mm. And once our freshman year, we took that in a uh, freshman year in Los Angeles. Uh, I went to U USC. We took that and then um, we biked from like downtown Los Angeles to like Echo Park, which is it's, you know, it's just like up in the yeah. hills and stuff like that. It looks down over Dodger Stadium. And just uh, I it's it wasn't as intense as that. We're like still in physical space, but like crazy visuals, like crazy thoughts, all that stuff. It's so long ago that it's like hard to remember. <laughs> But the fun part of it that I do remember is when we were biking back, we just like got too confused about like how the directions back. But we knew that if we went on the highway, we just had to go one exit and then we'd be fine. So we, <laughs> <laughs> so we just had to like steal ourselves up to be like, all right, we're biking on this fucking highway. <laughs> and we just biked down. And I just remember the most intense just like lights and sounds. Just be like, this oh, is you the were like still feeling the effect. We were still on peyote. Say, wow. How are you biking? For hours after that. Oh my god! Because when we took it, we just like had a while. We just like biked out to Echo Park, and then like had a nice time like biking around and stuff like that. And we thought we would just like go back down quiet streets back to campus, but we just got too confused, and we got to this point where it's like the only way where we could reason how to get back was to get on the highway entrance ramp and go to like the entrance by USC, yeah. the highway exit by USC, mm -hmm. and get off. And yeah. I just remember it was like the scariest. Fucking oh my thing god! Yeah, that's horrible. I was just like in like a light tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What, did you ever like think that you died at any point? Like, no, I was uh, just like I. I you were still pretty lucid. I wasn't lucid. I just remember it was like because like the literal forms of I just knew that like where the lights and noise are are dangerous. And yeah, if I stay over here, it's fine, and I just have to get to here. Oh my god! Was, you know what psychedelics? You have to like if things get very complicated, and you have to be like a, a point to B point, and that's and then I'll figure out the next step after that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was my reasoning became very like primordial. Ah, okay. That's that's the interesting thing is like my experience lasted maybe two minutes. Mm -hmm. It was very oh, short. That whole thing was two minutes. That whole thing. My life changed in two minutes. Oh it my was. God. Yeah. It was like, I yeah. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to handle. Psychedelics are cool though. They are very cool. Yeah. Mushrooms have always helped me. They've always been like kind of a thing. It kind of just grounds you and like makes you think about your life and stuff. And sometimes it's hard, but it's like. It's good, you know? Like, we always talk about, like, 
there's good trips and there's bad trips, but really every mushroom trip is everything. It's like the good and the bad and everything in between. And it's like, it's just a whole ride. And you got to, I guess, like be willing to give something up of yourself to be okay in that all. Like if you try to resist it, it's going to be a miserable time, I think. Mm. But uh, yeah, have you done any? No, I haven't done any of this stuff. That's Dang. interesting. I don't, well, I don't luckily, really wanna... I've dosed you before the <laughs> <laughs> That water you had tasted a little bitter, didn't yeah. it? <laughs> I dosed you through the seat of our toilet. Yeah, that Zyrtec <laughs> tastes like a shoe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is like a thing. I would never, like, recommend it or anything unless someone's, like, really feeling down. Then I would be like, maybe try this before you kill yourself. Because then you'll be trying it anyway, mm -hmm. you know? Right. That's crazy The DMT is released before you die. Yeah. Yeah. It's like as you die, I guess. But yeah, it's like, I don't know. It seems like it's all real. It seems like, like my experience was that world was more real than like this world. Right. And uh, yeah, I've never felt anything like that before. But anyway, that's my, that's my story. Your DMT story. My DMT story. DMT spiel. That's you, your book. You know what was kind of funny was like before, the week before that, like, cause I, I like, I've just been writing a lot about that. But the big, <laughs> I was like writing about this thing the week before I was on the subway and uh, there was, like, this couple that walked on the subway. And, uh, like, the girl had, like, no bra on, just, like, tits out. And they, like, sat down. And I was, like, standing there. And I realized I must have been, like, staring directly at her tits for, like, a long time. Like, I don't know how long it was, but maybe like, at least, like, six or seven <laughs> seconds. Or I'm just, like... <laughs> You know, like the you where you're eye like, contact with their nipples. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, just each eye on <laughs> yeah, each nipple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're like, those are uneven. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just like imagining what they look like with a bra, without a shirt, like whatever. And all of a sudden, like I like look over, and her boyfriend is just staring, at me. and I'm like, I just like look away immediately, and then out of the corner of my eye, I see her boyfriend like pointing at me and I'm like, Oh fuck. Like I'm such a fucking idiot. But then in my head, I'm like, you know what? Fuck that guy. Cause like if your girlfriend's a whore, your girlfriend's a whore. <laughs> no, but like if a girl is doing that, like part of them wants people to look right. Like they want, like maybe not stare. Maybe that was the wrong part, but like we're like, as men, we've all looked at that, you know, like, and I've dated girls who have had like no, bra on or whatever and like other men have looked but i didn't see Did she it. Have big tits or they just like like what do you No, they were like they were just like normal tits but it's like there's something so captivating about breasts about breasts well the thing i'll never because i don't i don't do that because that's insane but if you have but it's not comfortable because then your nipple is rubbing against yeah. your shirt. Like, I remember when I was, like, a like a preteen, like, your pubescent, you're about to get, like, your training bra. Yeah. It's a, incredibly uncomfortable. Oh, wow. You start to, like, because your, like, nipples, like, get, like, I guess hormones in them or something. Or I don't know what oh, the fuck okay. happens. But it gets really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, your nipple rubbing against your shirt all day, and you're like, Mom. Yeah. And then you buy a training bra. Okay. I think that's Oh, a, so that's, so like, then, the... So I'm like, why yeah. are these girls doing that? It's fun that it's called a training bra, isn't it? It's like yeah, training yeah. you to have tits. <laughs> That's what they're called, swear yeah, to God. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> it's Judy Bloom over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, it's so, yeah, I didn't know it yeah. was, like, worse to not wear a bra. Because, like, the thing about, uh, like, having a circumcised, you have a circumcised penis, right? Yeah. Jason David? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not? No, I am. Right. But, like, I feel like our the tip of our penis gets, like, kind of worn down and like we lose sense it and it looks like it looks like an old penny a... yes it does <laughs> this, it's, it looks like a like a riverbed that dried up you know it's like it's really seen like a lot of just shit just like an old man who's lived in the desert his whole life yeah just like the black and white <laughs> yeah, photo exactly. of his face yeah yeah it's like a person who lives to be like 119 <laughs> and right? you're just like that's beautiful <laughs> yeah. but not in the typical way yeah yeah it's like a guy with a fake eye who keeps showing it to people it gets like rubbed on yeah, yeah, exactly. it gets like worn out because it's just in there and it's rubbing against like whatever's in there right so I would have thought maybe over time, the more you don't wear a bra, the less like sensitivity your nipples have. This is the no, Patty. You bring this up. I think about this other because I'll be like, especially in Brooklyn, I see these girls walking without bras mm -hmm. on. It's so fucking obvious. Yeah, like, yeah. It's got to be so uncomfortable. Yeah. For them, <laughs> whether you have small boobs, it doesn't matter if you have small boobs or big boobs because we all have nipples. Right. So right. It's got to be rubbing. Yeah, I don't know. I always figured it was more comfortable. 
That's what I thought. Well, wear, not wearing a bra is for sure. Like, if I'm, like, running errands, like, in the winter, I just do, like, a sweatshirt, no bra. Yeah. But I guess that doesn't, uh, I don't know. That's, like, a little looser, maybe? Yeah, I yeah. thought it would be the whole strap thing. Like, that's the annoying part. It's in the armpits. Yeah. You know? Everything. Yeah. yeah. Like, what if we had to wear bras for our balls? Uh, well, that, I guess compression shorts. <laughs> do, you, do you wear, like, what kind of underwear do you wear? I wear just like cotton briefs. Yeah, because I can't. I don't. I used to wear boxers, but yeah. I, I my dick can't take that kind of like damage on the day. Yeah, it's that's just getting that's all like what stuffed makes me, and cottony. It's you know, so like it's like touching, then it's not, yeah. and it's just it's like too much friction. Yeah, it's yeah. like when someone's like really flirting with you. It's like just fuck me. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> don't keep rubbing and you around. Touch me. Yeah, like you're making me feel your, weird. Your dick keeps being like, is something is something happening? No, <laughs> yeah, all right, no. Yeah, is something? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, you yeah, just yeah, look through the porch screen door. He's being like, <laughs> yeah. he's being that's activated. The, that's the fly yeah. thing. And yeah, and then your dick pops out yeah, of that. Yeah, like, what's happening? What's going on? God <laughs> damn it! Yeah. So now I just have the briefs, and it's like those are all fine and dandy. But uh, they do make underwear where your balls sit in a little pocket, I noticed. That's like too much. Uh, it seems just, like too much going on. It's right? too much. It's one yeah. thing too many because I have seen those where it's like, it's like so I'm going to put this on, then reach my hand in, then like pull back and then deposit. It's just too many. Yeah. Steps. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think we had it right in years and years and years ago. Just the olive leaf yeah, yeah, yeah. around the waist. Or just the, like the night skirt. Like what? Like everybody yeah. just Scrooge wears. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah dude. You're you're about to that's what I wear to a, bed. Yeah. Everyone should wear a dress. Yeah. to speak to an apparition. Yeah. That's the kind of <laughs> outfit you want. Yeah. That makes sense. We used to wear like night, we would call them nightgowns as kids, but yeah. they're just giant. They're just like our dad's t shirt. Right. You know? And that was life. That was living it, baby. I mean, you you do the nightgown with the fuck. You have the nightgown hat. The, I uh, do. I have the whole robe and whatever. everything. What's that hat kind of called? I think it's just called a sleeping cap. Sleeping cap. Because people used to sleep with these on. Why? I think it was. Do rags for white people? I think people were so poor. They were trying to make waves in their hair. (laughs) (laughs) I think people were so poor that they couldn't afford heat. So at night, they would like pull it over their heads and then kill black people. (laughs) (laughs) But it is, yeah, it's a little close to the old KKK thing. Yeah, I was going to say, (laughs) put that thing in one too many times in the dryer and uh, (laughs) we got a problem. Oh, man. KKK. That's all, I got. That's all I have to say. But yeah, nipples. So you never go, you never free them? No, not in, I mean, like with a sweatshirt. Yeah. Where yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell. Right. I've never worn a thin enough thing without a bra on. Yeah. So, you know, they're D's. Yeah, so yeah. So we're, we're in a part of the alphabet that's. That's true. You guys don't no have. Return. You guys don't have the pleasure. But the, you know what they call the itty bitty titty committee? It's girls with like no boobs, you know that, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're lucky; they just get to bounce around town with no, with no, I know, no just consequences. No consequences. No straps to hold them back. And also, I think there's a common misconception that like guys always want like the big tits. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of guys who like small tits too. It's true. Yeah. Where are you? Where do you fall? I like big tits. Big old sloppies. Yeah, I, I like. I just like fat milkers. Yeah. <laughs> This is like a this is like revealing far too much, uh-huh. but I think my like ideal sexual scenario. This is after. <laughs> this is after like. It's just your mom giving you like, a no full one. hug. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just I don't. I guess giving me milk afterwards. Something, I like that. No that one. No one asked. It, no one <laughs> asked. This is like where I get myself into trouble too. Mm-hmm. I I hope to God if my parents were watching, they stopped as soon as they started smoking DMT, mm-hmm. and they're calling me on the phone right now, just in fury. Yeah, yeah. but uh, um, my ideal sexual scenario. This is after like knowing someone for like four years. Okay, I would never be. I'm not one of those guys who's like on a Bless first date. Thing. Like I like to get kicked in the nuts and told I'm a fairy. <laughs> like I'm not, mm-hmm. not me. Mm-hmm. But I would want to lay in a woman's lap mm-hmm. and just latch on mm-hmm. <laughs> while she jerks me off. I think that's what I want. You want to be like serviced. Wait, you, you sit in a woman's like a baby. lap. Wait, what do you a mean? A molested baby. You're sitting in her yeah, lap. Yeah, yeah. I want to be like a molested. Wait, child. Like, she, like she's cradling you? <laughs> no. Well, maybe, maybe like a hand going through the hair. <laughs> oh, fuck. Right. So she's just like working on you. So this happens, and then you go to bed. Yeah, this happens, and Is then there I sex at all. Or are you just gonna be weird? <laughs> Maybe there's sex. I haven't really thought it that. Incidentally, far. you grew up Catholic. I also, no? yeah, yeah. I also, <laughs> I also don't know if this is really what I want. Yeah. Um, have but you, have you yeah. experimented? Have you tried this? Oh, sorry, sorry. No, of course not. Right. 
Of course not. No, I... I don't even know, like, if I like anything other than Missionary, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. Missionary just feels like Lights the off. best. Eyes closed. <laughs> Lights off. Eyes closed. Eyes closed. <laughs> A nice gospel hymn playing yeah. in the background. A sheet with a hole in it between you two. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they might have been on to... Oh, my God. What is, is going on with sorry, my... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm not even No, you're good. The it's not your fault. Does this happen every episode? No, it's been happening lately. You need new tape. I need new, like... I need, like, a new path in life. <laughs> Pull this up. Let's see how that goes. Sorry. You're fine. Oh. Yeah, I've never... I don't know. I've never been... An adventurous guy. So you've you've never, been like you've, punched in the mouth. Yeah, I've done this whore. Can you believe her? <laughs> Wait, but you've never done anything other than missionary. No, I'll do the other things, but it's not really my. Uh, They're just chores. Yeah, it's, it's like Patty. Really you want to hit bag. it from the back? You're like, ah, oh, jeez. If, <laughs> if I must, uh, yes. Ah, yeah. oh, shucks. Oh god. I just call another guy. <laughs> <in order. laughs> you tag. Yeah, I All tag of a sudden, she, a just hears, she just hears Alan behind her. Ah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, you like that, don't you? You filthy whore. She can taste. <laughs> she can taste that the hair's red. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's blind. Yeah, she's just covered in dandruff after. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, I've never. I'm not really that adventurous. But who knows? Post DMT, that's new, an, that's an interesting patty. combination of like being so interested in like psychedelics and like yeah. sort of exploration of the mind, but still having like a puritanical vanilla, yeah. Yeah, vanilla. Dude, sex I'm like life. almost like anti sex. Mm-hmm. I almost think it's wrong. People say that, and that someone. means you haven't had good sex. May, probably not. I think people say that for ladies because with guys, you still like end up at the same yeah, place, you know? Yeah. Girls want to like walk funny after. Yeah, but you can <laughs> come differently. Uh, I, I suppose that's true. Fellas can? Yeah. Can no, we? No, no, but I'm just saying like, like, like you're saying we all end up at the same the guys end up at the same place, which is true. Mm-hmm. But I think you can have different types of combs. That's true. You know just I mean? a blue cum. <laughs> you gotta find yourself like an older lady who like Fucking just like she'll, just a dog. Goes nuts she'll, on you. Dog. she'll put you in her she'll put you in her lap and jerk you off. She'll be like, she, yeah, she will would. do that. Yeah. She would do that. Probably wouldn't even ask. You, you wouldn't really have to reach your neck to get the tits, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta pull them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny to just walk into a room where you're like in a lady's lap, like sucking her tits while she's jerking you off, and you're just like, I'm gonna leave, but I, I understand everything about Patty now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In this moment. Everything's coming together. Yeah. No. Do you, do you have sex outside of relationships? Uh, usually, no. I can't do like casual sex. I feel so <laughs> uncomfortable with it. It's mm-hmm. like I, I, I need like a connection, mm-hmm. you know. And I think it's just like a uh, maybe like a trust thing. Mm. But uh, no, it's like very. It's got to be like very solid in how I feel about that. That's person. demisexual. That's like a, th- a thing. That's what I thought I was, but right. it's like gay. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not a man. Yeah. yeah. I love Demi Lovato. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, uh, I thought it was like, yeah, that you need a connection. But then I guess the like people who really have that aren't like attracted to people like on the street. Oh, uh, is that true? I guess. That's intense. Cause like I'll see someone on the subway, you know, not you're, wearing you're, a bra. You're filled with animal <laughs> thoughts, but you fight them as hard as you can. Yeah, and that's right. my Catholic boyhood, mm. you know. But uh, yeah, I thought I was demisexual, and I was like super excited about it because I was like, "Oh, I figured out what I am." But <laughs> I don't know if that's you see really Patty at, at Brooklyn shows, just like wearing like I'm round LGBTQ, glasses, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm under yeah. the umbrella. You're yeah. hosting the female mics. <laughs> yeah. I'm basically one of you. Yeah. I'm basically a woman because I like love. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have anything weird you're willing to reveal in my bed? <laughs> weird? Am I a demisexual? No, I think yeah. I'm the opposite of that. Yeah, you're a hemi. A hemi. <laughs> she said, Love Hemingway. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I don't. I don't get it. No, I just wasn't sure if there was like any. Uh, if you like had any kind of interesting thing. Do you have any debilitating sexual disorders like Patty? Oh, like, uh, wait, like share a weird fantasy like you shared? Yeah. To make you feel better? Yes. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, I don't think I have any weird... I wanted to write a bit being like, because in New York, everyone's like, what's your kink? What's your kink? Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know, passion? <laughs> yeah. I don't have a kink. I, I heard kinks are genetic. 
Really? That's what I read, but I don't know if that's true. Just no one's ever checked on it. No one wants to talk yeah. to you. Right. No one's <laughs> asked dad. dad. Like, yeah, I got I gotta call my dad real quick. <laughs> I don't have any kinks really. Yeah. Uh maybe some weird like emotional kinks, but nothing like physical. Yeah. Here's another one that I kinda sure. have. I just wanna like walk onto the subway. There's something about like public transportation that like kinda revs my engine. Yeah, you're like a predator. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> public. Yeah. He likes a public rape. But yeah. like... Uh, a lady, I don't know, maybe she's holding on. She doesn't know I'm there. And then uh, I just start grabbing her and such. You know, something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, this is something I'll never do. Okay. Because like, I, one, I don't know if I'd actually like it. Two, very illegal. And three, like, uh, I don't think I'd actually like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but... There's something appealing about walking on the train and just fucking whacking off. Oh, like a crazy homeless person. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. And Do just... you want to be embarrassed? No. You want everyone to be like, whoopee. You yeah, want to be, like, I want excited? people to like look and watch. Like in an aggressive way? I'm going to have to delete this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? I'm trying to figure out what he has. Come on, USC. You must know. I think it's like a kind of voyeur thing. You want people to voyeurism? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you yeah. know what I think it was when I was in high school? Me and my high school girlfriend, like after this party, it was like twelve people sleeping in this living room, and like we were like next to each other, and we just like had sex in the room while everyone was like asleep. But I don't know if they were actually asleep. But pretty it was, like, sweet. It was pretty cool. Yeah. How I literally was just talking about this on my podcast. How do people have sex silent? I've never had silent sex in my life. When you really need to. You can do it. Yeah. Life, yeah. life yeah. finds a way. Life. Finds, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that sperm is going to find a way in there. Also, I think I think people, they get as silent as they can. And then as sort of return for the courtesy, everyone else in the room pretends to still be asleep. Yes. Yeah. Right, right, that's, right, right. that's like the thing that I'm coming to, to realize. You just that. weren't loud enough for everyone to be like, guys, come on. Yeah. You, were be, you were making an effort. But I was enough that people were like, you're just going to close <laughs> their eyes. Just traumatized all my friends. But nobody's brought it up, so who knows? They just saying. have videos that they watch. <laughs> yeah. Silent film. Nice. You just see a film bright... Noir. You think you're being silent. There's just like a bright film light that like yeah. comes on in the corner of the room. All you can room. hear is me just like... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a lady yeah, yeah. crying. No, that was me. <laughs> no, that, was, that was me. She was asleep still, actually. Uh, <laughs> it was all me. Yeah. But yeah, who knew I would get so open with you guys? Well, you just did DMT. It's the DMT. That's true. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe that's. I'm realizing it's all. It's all meaningless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do want to get past the annoying phase of it because I feel like I'm definitely annoying people. You know. No, it was interesting to hear about. Oh, that's good. What about like having sex on Instagram Live? That's, um, that's real voyeurism. Well, not but like intense. Who, who, who got in trouble for doing that? Chief Keef. Did someone do that? Chief Keef. I imagine people do. do <laughs> I think Chief Keef probably. I think Chief, or maybe it was like Snapchat back when like Snapchat was a thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, something like Snapchat that. seems like yeah, that's where all those filthy animals are. Right. Yeah, you that's know? what that is for. It seems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I deleted mine. I was like, Whew, I gotta get <laughs> off this. <laughs> yeah. I was just sending like crazy shit. I was like, this is not me. Yeah, but it is nice because it's like you, it's gone, right? Unless they save it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Remember that Crystalia thing? The <laughs> which thing? The Crystalia thing. Uh, Have you ever seen that video of him where he realizes that messages don't disappear? Yeah. So funny. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, and then like <laughs> kept going with the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I hope all the social media just dies. I hope it's all gone. Yeah. I hope uh, Elon Musk like mm -hmm. punches Mark Zuckerberg so hard. Mm hmm. That like the chip in his brain just sends a signal to all and Facebook all, and Instagram. All Facebook and Instagram shut down at once. And WhatsApp. Yeah. And then there's another coronavirus that kills all of China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there goes TikTok. Mm -hmm. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. You know, Martin Luther King had a dream. Mm -hmm. That's my dream. That'd be funny. You took DMT and you just arrived at like. Just like Chinese people need all to die. One point <laughs> five billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta go. Yeah. Wait, what if we, we can kill everyone in China except for like one person who can make like really good noodles? You know what yeah, I mean? like, you but they can do guy. that here. <laughs> They're doing it. Ever like we have enough Chinese people to then send back to China to repopulate. You know, there's like enough hundred percenters. But just here. like without TikTok. Yeah, and, just, and you're just like, and you're just like, don't, don't you start? You saw what happened. Do yeah, not start yeah. TikTok again. Yeah, we either need to like find out how to neutralize TikTok or find out how to make it uncool. Because. uh 
I don't know. I think it's a problem. What do you guys think? Like, do you think it's like bad? I think it's bad for. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think TikTok is like a negative platform, but I think the things about it that are negative, which is like really short form video content in an algorithm that is designed to addict you, will like outlast the particular lifetime of TikTok. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That it, yeah, it's already it's migrated over to Instagram. That's just like a thing. yeah, that's true, and that's it's gonna keep. Also, it existed going. on Vine as well. They're like that algorithm is just gonna keep being like yeah refined. My stuff. problem with TikTok is though, in like in the United States, they just give us all garbage. Like we all just get fed garbage, and like it keeps getting like exponentially worse because now we like the garbage, and then they're like, oh, well, here's even more. And then in China, they just like pump so much like black propaganda. In like a, like anti black people, what? not not like black people are awesome. <laughs> They're just like it's just like bad like videos of black people like do like committing crimes and stuff. This is in China? Yeah, in China. What are they it's all educational them, videos and then like anti black rhetoric Where did that on their from? TikTok. I don't. I saw like an article about it, but uh, so that's like it's like hell. It's just basically fueling racism over there. Hmm. And it's, it is crazy how it works, though, because, like, you'll post something on Instagram, and you'll get, like, 70 views in, like, a couple minutes, right? Yeah. And TikTok, you post a thing, you get, like, 500 views in, like, two seconds. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, Except for me. I never got that Well, I had one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had one video do well. I'm like, we love TikTok. Um, it's actually sad. Yeah, it fucking sucks. <laughs> and now my other ones do dog shit. And I don't know why. I think I got, like, shadow banned or whatever. Yeah. Um, for the reels thing, I just, uh, I was like doing well on Instagram and then <clears throat> recently I've been doing like horrible and I just got a thing from Instagram being like one of my old videos. They were like, you said dick and I'm like, Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yeah. So I deleted all my new stuff. I'm like, fuck this. I'm reposting it. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give it another go. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It does feel a little bit like reels and TikTok are shaping comedy and not the other way around. Like, mm. like it feels like there's a lot of people that are kind of getting chosen by these apps mm -hmm. that are like exploding and like some of them are good and some of them aren't, but it's like there, there's like a, a fine line. Cause like guys like Alan, Alan special is like so fucking funny. Like everyone who watches it loves it. And then like when he posts a reel, it just kind of like, mm -hmm. they're like, nah, cause maybe it is like the content. It's kind of like darker or whatever. But it's like I that's the part I don't like about it is like like comedy itself is kind of getting hurt in a way because yeah. people think people expect that now when they go to a club. They expect like kind of like someone just kind of going easy on everyone, being like nice and fun, like doing crowd work and everything. Yeah. And they're not getting that guy that comes in with like a new perspective or or kind of going at the audience in a way that like at first they're resistance to, resistant to, but then like laugh at the end and it's it's i agree i agree well jeffrey asmus is a guy i mean obviously there are always going to be exceptions but like jeffrey asmus is a guy who is sort of getting big on social media who like has sort of like a unique perspective and stuff yeah. like that so it's not like it's not like it's it not totally it's not like it excludes that stuff but it's like indifferent to it yeah right? but here's my argument for jeffrey asmus is aesthetically he's a good looking guy he's i think cute. I think that factors in. He's going to be a cute little boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah or something that He's will... like Peter Parker that'll never be Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Something that keeps your eyes on the screen for a, like a fraction longer than someone else, you yeah. know? Like even, because if it's a stand-up thing, if you're not into it, like you'll go through. But if it's someone who's like attractive, your brain kicks in and it's kind of like giving it like a second, just a little bit. But that like magnified in an algorithm is like... A lot. That's it's a lot, yeah. So I don't know. This is all my theory because I'm not very successful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. It does, but I think it also <laughs> same. Yeah, same. <laughs> it does oh, inform God. things beyond comedy. Like I think we're particularly attentive to how it's like. That's what's funny about comedians is we're like, yeah, the problem is this is like ruining comedy. And then meanwhile, it's also like promoting like ethnic cleansing in like other parts of the world. Yeah, yeah. But we're like, my fucking comedy reels aren't doing that good, and I think that means that these things need reform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all kind of silly stuff. It's also probably great for comedy because, like, so many – I think so many more people are, like, aware of comedy now. Like, my like my parents' generation, they weren't, like, really going to see – they'd be like, oh, George Carlin, and that was it. You know, right. <laughs> like, there was, like 
Not not a lot of people had a chance to. Now your mom's sending you Matt Rife videos with, with, the, cry, <laughs> yeah, with yeah, the crying yeah, face yeah. emoji. Yeah, it's and you're just like, I'm gonna jump her out of breastfeeding that. <laughs> like, this is the one thing I wanted. Yeah, why do I keep replaying it? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like I'll like my dad will send me like, or, like I don't know I'll get like you know on the Instagram it's like women doing comedy right because they're all competition obviously yeah and they. <laughs> And it'll be like a chick doing like a set and she'll be doing like, she'll be like grinding on the mic stand. And I'm like, she's like a million followers. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? I know. I'm yeah. like, I have 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. fuck me. Yeah. No, yeah, it is like a little, you got to just like, just totally abandon it. And I think like, oh my God. Guys, well, this, is this a problem? This is, was never this much of a problem. Right. I think what happened is I had like, nails in everywhere mm -hmm. and then it, they rip through the nails does it yeah this does yeah because it's like we're leaning on it and oh like yeah that shit. makes sense actually i think this might have be you, out of frame have you ever brought a girl home where she sees this setup no and she goes oh boy no i had this setup uh during the end of my last relationship and i have not had sex since then <laughs> okay well he, he nor and nor should or will he no you should not Unless there's someone who's full of love, chock full of love, yeah. right? For me, mm -hmm. listen, I'm in and love with the universe. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in love with DMT. <laughs> yeah, that's my wife. Yeah, get your hands off my wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely not quick to uh, to pick someone up. What's like the shortest amount of time you've like met someone and then bedded them? What do you mean? That's like all I do. <laughs> but like, how quick? Like, like you see someone at a bar. Are we talking then, about apps or like in real life? Uh, either. I like don't know. message to I, bed. Yeah, you just match them. I don't know, like an hour. Wow, that's yeah. pretty quick. Probably similar, but like not. I've been with my fiance since I was like twenty-one years old. So yeah, like college stuff before that. Yeah, what's that like, dude? Yeah, what's it like to be in love and happy? <laughs> Do it, uh, do it in detail. In detail, what, uh, what do you what, what do you mean? What's that like? I guess it's like, what is it like to like be with someone that long? Like, do you guys have to like spice it up, or is it pretty? Oh yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, you also uh, don't have to uh, share it if you don't want to. I mean, yeah, like knowing someone for that long is like you know, it's what, like you seem like you're into the emotional intimacy and stuff like that. Yeah, that certainly becomes an element. Um, you know, as far as uh, the other stuff, I would just say it takes like more um, uh, deliberation because like novelty and spontaneity just will get worn out over like a long course of time, right? Right. Because it's like it ceases to be like, oh, the first time we're in this situation, the first time we're in that situation. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's not just like with sexual stuff, just with like a lot of things you have to like make an effort to like make things exciting. Right. Well, I got good news for you. What's that? I got a bunch of wigs if you want to try some of them. <laughs> you, yeah, what do you have wigs for? Uh, I bought... <laughs> they, they all match my mother's hair color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, in my closet, I have like a shrine to her with yeah. just big watermelons. <laughs> like, no, I... I it's just a, an effigy of his mom. He's like, ignore that and just grabs a wig. It's like, yeah, hey, yeah. there you go. I, uh... For some reason, I was like, oh, during the pandemic, I really wanted to do, like, a bunch of sketches. And I'm like, I'm going to have to have a ton <laughs> the of wigs. bed wig. just rises. What the <laughs> fuck is yeah. That's the biggest clicker I've ever seen. Oh, uh, that's for the <laughs> air. Patty's just like, just, Patty's with a friend. He's like, I think I'm going to start doing more sketches. They're like, oh, great. He's like, I guess I'm going to need to buy 30 ladies' <laughs> yeah, wigs. Literally, <laughs> I literally bought 12 wigs one day. Dude, during the pandemic, I was just drinking every day right. and just yeah. doing like manic things. Like, I I spent like I think fifteen hundred hours designing and doing the <laughs> artwork for a drinking card game, <laughs> and then like I spent like like a big fraction of my life making this, and I got it like printed at Staples, and then like I put it all together, and I had friends over to play it, and it was like the worst <laughs> game. It wasn't fun at all. It was like a big waste of time, but like. Yeah, that was – I was kind of in – I was like, oh, I have to, like, do something because comedy's not going on. And, yeah, I just bought a bunch of wigs and then Imagine made, like – Imagine if the drinking card game had, like, taken off, though. You'd be a fucking millionaire. Yeah, yeah. That would have yeah. been – no, maybe worth it. Yeah, if you were smarter, it would have been like, I know. Good at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The problem was I tried to make it too complicated. It was, like, a, kind of like a – almost like 
and like an RPG kind of like style. Oh, uh, that's too gay. Ring of Fire is fun though because that's like <laughs> it, that gets like more complicated oh, as it goes. <laughs> Wait, what is Ring of Fire? That's like the one where it's like uh, so it, there's just a deck of cards. Okay. And each number corresponds to like a certain thing you're supposed to do. Oh, like kings. Kinda? So like yeah, yeah, like two is you, three is me. Like four, yeah, yeah. There's, there's just like a rule associated with every card. Yeah, so I think King's Cup is like the same idea. But see, the problem is you can't make any money off that idea. Yeah, right. Because then it's just other people's it's cards. Just, it's just regular cards. Yeah, like those those picture the Santa one, mm -hmm. and then that uh, mushroom one where like two of the. Designs that Did you, do you so you like know these are these oh, look those good. are yours? You like know yeah, how to make the, cartoons and shit. Yeah, I'm like a pretty good, those are like legit good. Yeah, thank you. Wait, uh, the Lizzo one, you two, or that's no, the Lizzo and the Muppets one are not me, okay, but the two other ones are like the Santa one that's like called Take a Lap. So I feel like you have that card, you have to sit on someone oh. else's lap. And there, there were other things like uh, like crack an egg on your head, take a shot of milk. Uh -huh. We had uh, we used to have a board game where there would be like taking a shot card. of milk in the middle of a game that is drinking is not fun. Yeah, you will for sure throw. We up. also had take a shot of Nyquil. Oh, that's good. And a lot of people would turn that down, but if you turn down a challenge, you have to take two shots. So like people got so fucked up. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, this was like the board game version of it that was actually fun in college. The end of the game, there's like a last ring. You basically work your way toward the center of the board. And uh, one of the last things is call your mom. So if you land <laughs> out in the middle of the night and like out, we would all play because we were all like buddies and stuff. And like it got to the point where like if someone landed on it, they would call and like the, you just hear a mom pick up at like two in the morning and be like, are you playing that game again? <laughs> <laughs> it was so worried. Yeah. <laughs> After they've had to like crush up like Dramamine and like eat it yeah, and yeah. take like 12 shots of whiskey. I feel like the moms all liked it though because it it's was cute. like yeah and it like got family you in friendly. touch. Yeah. Very family friendly. But yeah man that was like the way my brain was working during the pandemic. I like need I needed to drink but I needed to somehow make it into a game you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean that sounds like it sounds like a more fun game than you would than I was expecting. I thought yeah. you, this sounds like because I thought it was just going to be like a manic episode where like you flip over a card and it's like, in 1961, the CIA invaded the country of Guatemala, but left behind a key detail. Why? Why yeah. did they do this? Why? Please tell me. I can't go to sleep anymore. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Say it. Explain it. Explain it. You work for them. Explain it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, it was it was actually a fun game. Like the board game version of it. It was like a slap a Jew card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The board game version of it was so much fun in college that like we had like a list of people that wanted to play, mm -hmm. but like we didn't just like let them you like we would have to bring them over and they would like come in and play with us and stuff. It was a lot like a, a drug trip or something where it's like, oh, come in and we'll do like the thing or whatever. Get absolutely shit faced. In <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oneonta, New York, or wherever the fuck. Yeah, you were. yeah, yeah. Potsdam. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there was nothing else going on. It's either. literally either this or go like do heroin in a guy's car. Exactly. Yeah. And honestly, heroin is both healthier <laughs> and safer. <laughs> <laughs> and funner yeah, yeah way more fun you play the board game of in your mind when you're on heroin that's one thing uh i will never try is heroin but mm. i've kept good for you <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah i've kept saying like oh i'm i've tried all the drugs i've tried and there's like always a new one mm -hmm. you know that's also for a guy to be like it's like i'm never i'm never gonna try it's like a girl being like i would never fuck that guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're, you're like, like why do you keep bringing it up <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man yeah there was there was like a moment too where uh i'm getting like very personal i'm so, I, first of all I'm sorry if this isn't like the most funny podcast. No, this is good. This Look, is... Patty brought us over to his apartment in the middle of fucking Bushwick <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we could interview him. <laughs> yeah, so I can talk about my religious experience. <laughs> Patty missed on his podcast so we could talk about his weekend. <laughs> could have said it over the phone. <laughs> the worst part is I've talked to like nine people over the phone about it. I just can't shut up about it. But like there was a moment uh, where like I uh, – I saw, like, over the weekend, this was, like, the day after my DMT thing, where I saw, like, at, like, not evidence, but, like, a person that had hooked up with my ex, like, since we broke up, and, like... You're there, in New York? No, no, no. But, um, it was, like, there was, like, a, a moment 
where I was like very like kind of upset. I was like, oh, like that like sucks because it's like the reality of the situation, you know. And then like 20 minutes later, I just like it totally went away. And I was like, I felt like totally fine. And like it was like a full circle thing. So I was like grateful that I saw because I think people need that. I think they need like that rea- dose closure, of reality. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. But I don't know if I would have been able to do that, you know, because like that's a big pill to swallow. And he had a pretty big pill. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Wait, is this your most recent ex? Yes. Wait, yeah, yeah. Are you tell us, are you tell us who the guy was after we get up. Well, no, it's. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't know who it is. It was someone not around here. Mm-hmm. But uh, That'd be, that I know. It's of. funny to picture that you're just like deep on her social media stuff and have like been obsessively like searching in the background. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, evidence. And you're just like, What's evidence? And you're just like looking at someone else's like, page like a... where she's in like the background of a story and you're like. Well, this is healthy that I did this. I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I can sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. It's tough. Breaking up is tough. You know, one thing about being uh, in a relationship for so long is uh, there were like people. You, how long were you guys together? Like a while, right? Like only like nine months. Right, but so a little bit bef- before that, we were kind of like, like kind of on and off. So it's funny now. Uh, when I look back on like girls who I had like had things with, then nothing went on like especially long, but like girls that I got very like emotionally invested in over like a relatively short period of time. And when I yeah. look back on it, it's not like I think it's silly, but it's like that feeling is so diminished, not only because of like how long ago it was, but also because I think about like how long I've known my fiance. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's just like such like a small, like massive it's all time. relative. I just like barely knew right. that person. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, this girl who I was like upset about when I was whatever age is like, I didn't even fucking, I don't even, I don't know anything about that person. Yeah. And I like, I, I'm like a type of person who has like a very high capacity for like love. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like looking for somewhere to put that, like someone to give it to. And then like when that opportunity presents itself, it's like, it's all in, you know, I go like all in. And like a lot, a lot of times, like when that ends, eventually it's like, oh, I have nothing. There's nothing, no part of me left, you know? Well, that's one of the interesting things about like, uh, like really intense, like passion and stuff like that is it isn't like created by like familiarity necessarily. It's just like an emotion that exists within us and this capacity to like feel like very strongly. And, uh, I don't know. It's just funny. Like the difference between that, like the sort of thing, like in Romeo and Juliet, like that type of thing, where it's just like all consuming, like all at once, like crazy love type of thing. Right. Versus like the actual, um, uh, like what gets built over a long period of time. Right. The relationship between those two things and what's like different about them is like yeah. a very interesting thing. But yeah. nine months is a long time. Nine months it is, is a long time. It's not an insignificant It's enough where your teeth sink in. Yeah. Right. And like, you're like, I can picture a real, like, I like, can, yeah. A, a future together. For, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think, and like I started feeling not that strong, but like I started feeling like love and stuff like before we were like even together. Mm-hmm. So like once it like manifests itself, then it like you double down on it, and it's like I don't know. There's a lot of lessons you learn from every single relationship. I'm but sure. with this day and age, like you know, you see your exes on Instagram and stuff like that must be hard. Torture. Yes, yeah. Like I blocked her, and like but like. I just had to get. It was much. all for me. You can't, you, know? you can't have the fucking input all the time. No, no. I yeah. like. It must have been. Obviously, it's never easy. But like, I really envy those people. Like in the seventies, eighties, like before. Because like, if you AIDS. break up with someone, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you, that's the best that you're like, maybe they died of AIDS. Maybe, I haven't right? seen you, just, you stopped dating them in like 1978 and then AIDS happens and you're just like, oh, she probably died she's of that. That's great. Of AIDS. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. she's always having sex with gay guys. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah that's uh, Yeah, it's it's a lot. I don't know. I'm still processing like so much of this. But I remember uh, one of my like my first ex girlfriend in college who we like barely we, we barely dated but i was like very into her and then like it ended it was like one of those i think i was like similar to you and like i just get very into it very quickly yeah and yeah. then she was kind of like this is like too like like very nice but like got out of it yeah and then she went abroad for like the next semester so i didn't see her at all at college for like a whole semester which is like great yeah and then i saw her the next semester and i was like well this feels horrible yeah so how much worse would it have been if she was just like around that whole oh time? wow so you still felt like- yeah when i saw her like you know she went we would have dated in the fall and then she went abroad in the spring so then i saw her like the next fall so like a fucking year after yeah we had, yeah and i was still just like well i hate 
saying you for even a second. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That that's correct. Because I've fallen for people who don't have any interest in me. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> your like, mom, <laughs> that lady on the train you were staring at. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Big t- big titty <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'd love to put a ring on those. T- <laughs> <laughs> Pat, by the way, Patty thinks he was just looking, but he's actually just like rubbing his hands together and licking his lips the whole yeah. time. Oh, he was fluffing it. Yeah. I was yeah. scheming. Yeah. <laughs> he was taking pics. And like... her boyfriend was so rude about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. What a toxic man. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I I I like got off what like one or two stops after. It wasn't even my stop, but I was like, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm just gonna wait yeah. for the next train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna live in a new place. And yeah. Be a new guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is it, it is like it's so much, but that's like that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, I guess. Just that <laughs> yeah, just that chasing that feel. I do like like going really hard because like the if the fallout is always tough, but it's like then you learn that you can move past that. Mm-hmm. Like that's not going to take you out. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, if that's not going to take me out, maybe I'll be a NASCAR driver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'll be an astronaut. Maybe I'll hang a green screen around my, <laughs> my bed <laughs> and slowly descend into madness. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I almost took it down before this episode because the other night I was looking at it. I was like, I don't. I should take this down. This no, is like, I think it's funny with the faces. In the yeah, so you just take art and I. And for example, during this clip, my face would be superimposed on this while you explain to me how it works. Not necessarily. Well, not necessarily. I ran this by <laughs> Romy. I just basic. I'm very lazy about it because it's so much work and. Uh, I don't really want to spend all my life doing it, but uh, I just basically take almost like cl- time chunks. So it's like, and I just go back and forth between each person, and there's just like times where their face shows up, and then it goes away, and then someone else's, and like it has no relevance to whoever's talking. Yeah, it's just kind of like there, and, and I was whatever. on the pod before, and there's another guy here. And there's one of my face in the background. I'm just like fucking. I'm not even on planet Earth. I'm yeah. thinking about like anything. If you're si- like if you're where I am, because there's like a lot of green around me. Like I'm in the hot seat. Mm-hmm. My big head's gonna be floating around <laughs> in this episode. And like Romy, when she was over there, I'm gonna get some good use out of that. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll blow oh, it up so just need, your you nose. Need the, you need this straight on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two comedians, Jew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, are you got? You're both Jewish, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, let me. I got a little surprise for Is you guys. Kill us? Yeah, this can't be good. He just has like some original Zyklon B. <laughs> <It's mine. laughs> oh, I can't be. Why do you have that? <laughs> no, no. no, I'm wearing it. Do I want one? Look at my hair, Patty. You know what's? You know what's really? You know what's really funny about that is like <laughs> not much. I had. <laughs> Dave Namory on and Kiwi Weintraub, and they're like mm-hmm. both Jewish. And like Dave Namory, like is borderline anti Semitic, <laughs> even though he's Jewish. So he like wore me and him wore the hats, and Kiwi was like so unhappy about yeah. it. <laughs> Kiwi's like, I can't do that. Is it like a is that like an offensive thing? Well, can I say something that will then be cut out? Yeah, let me do a <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, Wait, we're why back. can't we say that you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I really sorry. need to. <laughs> I re- hey, Patty, I'm fully retarded. Cut all this out. <laughs> if we all look, <laughs> I, I'm I, so dumb. I I don't know why. I if if it was that information in isolation is fine. Yeah, and some playful anti-Semitism in isolation is fine. But those two items together creates yeah. content that could get me in trouble. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The last thing I want is for someone to get in trouble right. in my bed because then I have to spank them. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be, dude, would be funny if we found out you actually like have all sorts of like kink shit in here, but you just have this like good old boy thing to yeah. like, deflect from it. Well, you know, I did but buy... like a trunk full of like leather harnesses. <laughs> yeah, just and giant which... dildos. <laughs> <laughs> I just rub them. I don't even like do anything. I just like rub them on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the texture. I just like how it feels. <laughs> I did buy like those uh, things that you you tie yourself up because mm-hmm. uh, I was gonna like try that out one time. 
Just tie, tie, tie you up? up or tie her up? Tie her up. Nice. But I never set it up. Did you see that movie about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a lazy kink? Yeah. Uh, they're just a like, lazy dom? It's just like in the packaging in my drawer. Right so now. you have literally what I described. You have like handcuffs and restraints and shit. Yeah, but it's like, they're like fuzz. They're like soft. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a very casual Velcro restraint. You know, like if I were arresting a guy, if I were a police officer, first of all, I'd be very proud to be a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make that clear. You bleed blue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I were to do that, I would never put fuzz in Can you make this a Blue Lives Matter sign while you're doing <laughs> <laughs> This is News From Bed. Hi, this is News From Bed. I'm in bed, and this is the news. Isn't this exciting? Are we involved with this part? Because she put her mic down. Well, I don't know. If you feel the urge to laugh. Oh, okay. She's being kind. I don't think we're supposed to add anything funny. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Nobody ever laughs. <laughs> so don't laugh. Hannah Montana star Mitchell Musso was arrested for public drunkenness. Apparently for protection in prison, he's taking a page out of Hannah Montana's book and will serve time under the pseudonym Blender Butt to avoid all that nasty anal rape. Did you did you memorize this? No, you're reading it off the phone. I got a thing. Yeah, a 70 foot yacht carrying guns and drugs and prostitutes was discovered in the Nantucket Harbor. The media is now referring to the event as the Boston High Tea Party. Are you confused? Norfolk police pulled over a vehicle with a bull riding in the passenger seat. Police police believe that the bull may have been driving the car at some point because it kept running through red lights. Or the or the bull was driving the car and making the passenger watch. That could be another good one. Wait, what does that mean? Like a bull and a cuck? Have you heard those terms? No. No? Oh, boy, I really got to get myself out there. <laughs> a Delta flight had to turn around and return after a passenger had diarrhea all over the plane. Reminds me of that old math equation. Delta equals change in underwear. That one's pretty That's cute, good. right? Yeah, I like that one. Manhattan is to build its first ever movie studio along the Hudson River. If there's two things I know to be true, it's that home is where the heart is and Hollywood is where the Jews are. (laughs) That would have done well if we had the hats on. (laughs) That 70s show actor Danny Masterson got 30 years in prison for the rape of two women, meaning either he must have been extremely violent or the victims must have been extremely sexy. Do you think they do that? (laughs) The, The hotter the victim is, the longer the sentence. Yeah. Maybe. Gay dating app. Lastly, let me let me get into this. Lastly, gay dating app Grinder is losing half of its workforce over a return to office mandate. Pretty ironic, considering mandates are the exact service they're providing. This has been news from bed. Good night. I was supposed to blow out a candle, but I forgot to light the candle. You could blow. You could do vape because the. Be oh like- yeah. Oh, I already stopped recording, but Romy Rosner, Jason David, thank you guys so much for coming and uh you know bearing with me in these What do you mean bearing with you? Why are you being so self deprecating No, things are not trying. Things are going good now. Things are good. No, I just feel bad because I'm not really in like a funny state of mind. I think you're, you're being very funny. This might be the end of my comedy career. You think so? Maybe. You're just going to get on stage and be like, what's the fuck? What's the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've, t- I've had those. I've had those nights. Yeah, or just be way too happy. Yeah. Uh, have you seen the I'm Doug so- Stanhope bit about DMT? No. Oh, you got to watch that. Yeah. Does yeah. he like, does it, like, did it have like some kind of. He talks all about it. You'll see some parallels between your experience. Oh, okay. Yeah. That is the, that's the weirdest thing about it is like everyone who's done it has had like has seen those elves, you know, like had like so it makes it feel like it is like a reality that you're not. Seeing. Have you read any of the Terrence McKenna stuff? I like listen to him talk about it. I haven't like read it. See, this is the thing with with any psychedelic stuff. Any like regular person who does it, I'm down to hear them talk about it. Yeah. But people who like that's now that's their whole life is like 
propagating, yeah, which I like, yeah. can't listen to. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to get it out of my system. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got to move on and be a human. But uh, do you guys have uh, things you want to promote? Um, yeah, I'm going to be in Conway, New Hampshire with Matt Bowman on September 23rd. Ooh. Uh, when does this come out? Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be in Harvard of Grace, Maryland uh, on... Um, uh, wait, so Conway, New Hampshire with Matt Bowman, Tuckerman Brewing, September 23rd. September 15th, I'm going to be uh, at Hopkins Farm Brewery in Haverhill Grace, Maryland with uh, Katie Hannigan and Daryl Charles. Nice. That was all I know Daryl Charles. Yeah. From, are you from Baltimore? No, I'm from Philly. Oh, yeah. And he does he, Philly all the time. He does Philly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a black be there. guy, right? Yeah. I was going to say, Take he, it easy. you can't have two black names and not be a black guy. <laughs> Daryl Charles. So you don't, you don't know. You're just guessing based on his name. Just guessing. I thought maybe. you were remembering him. You got to remember, I'm in touch with the gods. Right? <laughs> Romy, you should, get, you should get a Tesla and make the license plate DMT God. <laughs> yeah. Then you find out that Elon already has that, and you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I find out I actually have no money. And I can't afford it. <laughs> you go into like a Tesla, uh, like a uh, store with a dealership with all this like great bit in mind, and they're like. You, see, you have forty dollars in your account, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you don't understand. <laughs> Romy, um, nothing crazy. Oh, I'm in Boston this weekend. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, with myself. Wow, yeah. you're headlining? <laughs> no, no, no. He just mentioned people he was going to. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, just follow my Instagram, Romy Rosner Comedy, and my podcast, Crib Podcast. Crib Podcast? Yeah. I thought it was like. In bed with Romy. It's an acronym. Chris and Romy in bed. Oh, okay. Well, you got to say that. They're a Sorry. little retarded. <laughs> you did it this way? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.